and welcome to episode 2 of Beginner's Guide to Marvelous Designer. In this episode we'll focus on using the 2D window here before moving on to the 3D. Now we may begin to use it slightly in this video. So in the last video we looked at everything in the menus here. If you don't know what any of this is then I recommend you go check out that video now. I'm going to put an info card here so you can just click that. Come back to this video and carry on from here. So the 2D viewer is this one here which I'm moving about now and as you can see it has a layout of these garments here that in the end become stitched together to what is now in the 3D view. Move about this as you can hold the mouse button, the middle mouse button and you pan it around like this. We also have the zoom in so if you push the mash wheel forwards you will zoom out if you scroll it down you will move in. You can also hold ALT and left mouse click to move, move the mouse down to zoom out and the mouse in to zoom in. So we're going to look at how to add, manipulate and sort of sew things together using the 2D editor. Now at the top we have a ton of buttons which at the minute kind of look a little scary, who knows what they do, you know. Well first off we'll start with these ones here. So these ones are for editing and sort of changing the patterns you've already drawn in your garments. So the one that's got selected right now, these points on the triangle here, that is our move tool. So we can move things, we can move points, we can move curves, and if we left click one of them hold shift you can see we get this sort of we get this eight pointed star and we can move it in either direction so we can use shift to get a more accurate version of where we want to move it and then if you also use right click if you tap right click we can get moving distance where we can import the exact amount we want to move now I have had someone in the past tell me that this doesn't work because that is not a floating point number this program works using close point numbers using a decimal point rather than a comma. So if we did that, it's going to move it up 7.6. It's going to re-sew it and simulate. And we're going to turn off simulation. And we can also do that using the shift. So we can say we want to move it 7.6 at 45 degrees and it will do that for us as well. Now on to this one the transform pattern and this if we select it just select the entire pattern we can now move it around we've got its origin point which we don't really need to do with but if we put that over here say we can then use this top part here to rotate it and it's going to rotate around that origin point and it's also going to scale around that origin point put that back to the center so anywhere you put this it's going to rotate and scale around so obviously at the top, like I just showed, we have the rotation. You can't use right click to get a, or shift to get more sort of specific ways of rotating. And with scaling, you can actually use the right click to do percentage or dimension wise scaling. And then if you hold shift, it makes sure it's uniform so it doesn't use that ratio. Next along is edit curve. So what an edit curve does is we can take either a curved piece of geometry like this one or even a straight edge and just begin to use this to give it a curve. So as you can see it's creating a curve no matter where it follows the mouse and the closer it is the smaller that curve is. And it also doesn't have a right click function it just cancels the curve is on a curved surface as well. Okay this next one along uh, just edits the curve points. We can just click on this curve and add some points to it that we can then manipulate or convert back to a curve. We can add points and split lines using this tool. So if we right click we can split it into two lines using lengths 
a uniform split, uniform split just splits it up evenly along this distance between this number of points. And then we can use this final one to create a rounded corner rather than a sharp edge at the end should you need it. So all I'm doing is clicking on this edge point, moving my mouse up and down and we're getting this effect you can see here and it stops when we hit that other point. Next we're going to look at creating polygons and internal polygons in the 2D browser. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this dress she currently has and we're going to learn to create our own polygons here. So this first tool, this first great tool is called Polygon and that allows us to create a shape with any number of points we want. Like so. And we can also create a polygon with a length Using the right click, we are able to add specific lengths, and then we can join those together. And as you can see, this creates it in the 3D view, and we can use this to fabricate them both together. Okay, we can now use the first move and edit tool to right click on these points, and we can either delete them, which will now create a new line between these two points which are now connected or we can create a curved point which will now curve the geometry between the now connected two points. Okay, the next one along is just a rectangle or square. So if I hold shift, it creates a square if I just press left click once, it gives me this create rectangle, which I can then use to enter a width and a half. And the same with the next one along, this one is just a circle. So we can drag it out to get the right size circle we want, or we can tap it and give it a diameter. And that will create a circle for us. And we can use these to create all Okay, next we're going to look at the internal tools and finally the sewing. These tools here are for texture editing and UV packing, which we don't need to worry about at this point. But very quickly, you can see Edit UV shows what these UVs would be like when exported. So a UV is a 2D image containing data about these clothes that we could then add textures onto and import it back. The internal polygon lines are polygons that can only be created inside a pattern, as we get this warning here. What it means is that when I've created my shape, I can now create another shape inside that pattern, which we can then use the first tool to do things like cut. And now we've cut this piece of geometry away from the original piece. And again, the internal ones just do the same. So we've got the rectangle or square one here, which does the same when you left click. And the same for sim. Next, we'll move on to sewing. This is the final bit we'll do of the tutorial today. You can see in these left-hand sides, now we've got everything selected though. We have things like elastic. If you select that, this line here we have selected will now be operate as an elastic band and the same for curved side geometry it will act like the geometry is curved particle distance layer and all this we will deal with in 3d you don't need to worry about these in the 2d for now so sewing we've got segment sewing which sews the points between two points so we've got this entire line here and we can sew that to that part there and it sews these two segments together as we can see in the now 3d editor it visualizes that for us or we can do this part which is free sewing which essentially means I could go from this point to this point and sew that onto that point or 
I could do a small selection between two points, which I want to attach to the entirety of that point, or between the two small points here, I want to do that small point, and basically it just lets me sew as little or as much as I want to different segments and parts. And finally, the one I didn't use at the minute was the edit sewing. And edit sewing means I can select each sewn part here, and I can either delete the sewing, or I can use the property editor here to edit it. So that is all for the 2D window. I hope that was helpful. I know I went through it quick, but the learning the tools is much easier when making garments than it is by me explaining what they do. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you did, and don't forget to share this video with your friends if you think it can help somebody else that you know might be struggling or wanting to use Marvelous Designer. Leave a comment in the comments down below, just tell me what you thought of the video and the series so far, and if you want to see more from me, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Thank you, goodbye.